Alpine avait déjà confirmé son avance avec la victoire du Terry. This is the Alpine A110R. But what does that R mean? The A110 has been one of my favourite cars ever since it arrived in 2017. Its focus on lightweight and a more relaxed ride quality have felt like a breath of fresh air in the sports car scene. A mildly hotter S version arrived in 2019, but this latest R variant moves things on much further, not least in price, with the R starting at nearly £97,000. At first I thought this might have used R just because it's the next rung up the automotive alphabet. Obviously, R comes before S in terms of the normal alphabet, but we all know that in the automotive sphere, well, R is better than S. However, that didn't necessarily fill me with an awful lot of confidence because, well, in my experience, the standard A110, the one without any letter after it, is the best A110. Making it firmer for the S, giving it a little bit more power, didn't improve it. So the idea of the R being 10% stiffer still and not actually getting any more power or torque, 296 brake horsepower, 251 pounds foot, thank you very much, dual clutch gearbox, because that's all it can take, well, it doesn't seem like a great recipe. But then I looked at the spec sheet and wondered if the R might not be for reduced, as in reduced weight, because there have been some clever changes to this. Now we'll get to those carbon-based alterations faster than an F15 Eagle, but first there's just a little bit of information for those of you based in the land of McDonnell Douglas. <clears throat> you can help support these videos by joining the Haggerty Drivers Club. It includes a subscription to our award-winning magazine, unlimited access to our valuation tool, 24-7 flatbed roadside assistance, free classified listings, exclusive coupons and offers, and early access and VIP perks to select Haggerty events. More info in the link below. And just to be clear in case John Leonard's watching, a jet definitely isn't part of the deal. Right, on with the film. The standard A110 weighs in at a little over 1100 kilos or 2425 pounds, which is akin to a paperback in a world of large print hard covers in the current climate. But the R has managed to shave off even more mass. The new carbon lid at the front saves 2.9 kilos, while the lack of a rear window saves another kilo, although I think some Lexan might have been nice. The standard seats were already a trim 13.1 kilos each, but these pair back another 2.5 kilos off that figure. Some things do add weight, such as the new front splitter, side skirts, rear wing and diffuser. These shift the aero balance backwards to help stability, but only actually add 29 kilos of downforce. Interestingly, however, drag has actually decreased by 5%, meaning the R's top speed increases to 177 miles an hour. And, for what it's worth, the 0-60 mile an hour time has also been reduced, with the R dipping a tenth below 4 seconds. The most important weight reduction, however, comes in the form of the carbon wheels, which you've no doubt spotted are a different design front and rear. Although terrifying if you're parallel parking near a high kerb, they do reduce rotating and unsprung mass by a useful 12.5 kilos or 27 pounds. They also work in tandem with new suspension that gives you 20 clicks of adjustment in the damping and allows you to lower the ride height by a further 10mm from the R's standard 10mm drop. This is what Alpine calls its track setting, which made me wonder if the R might stand for racing. R for racing would certainly, well, be quite convenient for Alpine and its marketing team. What's more, they've done 32 Alonso editions, 32, because it is obviously Alonso's number. Although that was a little bit inconvenient when he then announced he was going to Aston Martin. However, the more I drove the A110R on a variety of roads, the more I realised that it wasn't the faster, smoother ones where the new IBAC spring ZF dampers and BASF bump stops were really shining the most brightly. And that made me think that the R should really stand for rally. V8 
50 years after Alpine won the World Championship and 50 years after they came 1-2-3 at Monte Carlo. Well, it would make sense, wouldn't it, to do something that celebrated that. And of course Alpine has produced a rally version of this car, the RGT version. And if they wanted a hero to hang a special edition off, well, why not pick somebody else that doesn't want to give up seemingly, that still thinks they've got a world championship in them if they could just find the right machinery. Yes, the campaign starts here for a Delacour edition A110R. And I don't mean rally in the sense of these cars we've seen recently like the 911 Dakar and the Lamborghini Huracan Serato. No, this is a proper tarmac rally car. I'd just love to put a number on the side of this, go through scrutineering and do a tarmac rally in it. Maybe the Manx or Jim Clark. Epint as we're in Wales. It is so lovely when you find a car like this that is at home on a road like this. Happy to fly through the air, land well, and instantly grip, tack into the corners, let you look up through. Even when it's bucking like this, you can hold the line. You feel all the grip through your backside, through the steering. It's just brilliant. I love the fact that you just have these pretty tiny steering inputs and it remains so clean through corners. It's not ragged which might sound boring, but it's so involving. The fact that this is so lightweight makes itself abundantly clear on a road like this. The response in terms of acceleration, braking, cornering, it's all there. But a car like this, to me, harnesses, they do make sense. Because I think something to do with it being lightweight and so responsive feel the lack of mass more through being so strapped into it. I do know that some people find harnesses annoying however, and I'm not sure the seats, lovely though they look, will be to everyone's taste either, with the positioning of the pads taking a while to get accustomed to. And while we're being critical, we should talk about the 1.8 litre turbocharged four-cylinder engine, because although it's effective, it's not the most characterful. Pops on the overrun are fun, but it certainly doesn't feel exotic in comparisons with the naturally aspirated 4 litre flat 6 that you can get and the cheaper Cayman are inevitably unflattering for the Alpine. For the money, you could argue that the interior isn't quite up to snuff either. It's not bad, but you can certainly see its humble underpinnings. I, I love things like this, the sort of the body colour bits up here and actually Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, all this works pretty well. The bridge down here is still a nice piece of theatre as well. Lashings of Alcantara are a tactile pleasure, and I like the big red tongues of door pulls too. So I suppose it's really just some of the switch gear that jars a little. The lack of rear window there, you get used to that pretty quickly too. There's just some occasions inevitably where you want to be able to see more behind you and having to put it into reverse to get the reverse camera is not really always an option. Perhaps one of those rear view mirrors that's actually a screen linked to a camera would have been nice, but I suppose that would have added more cost and weight. And if it was a case of development budget, well, I'm glad they focused on the damping. At lower initial speeds, this does still feel firm and it doesn't necessarily bode that well, but like really good passive dampers do, they get into their stride above a certain speed. This is not some sort of magic carpet. Like I say, it's not a 911 Dakar or something, which is going to just sort of steamroller over stuff. This just copes with the bumps, keeps you very much in contact with the road and retains its precision. It deserves to wear cut to rubber, not something knobbly. It's so much fun. It's precise, but not prescriptive. Just occasionally, yes, perhaps you think, oh, maybe I'd want a limited slip diff or big old handbrake for the hairpin bends. But mostly, it's just so involving. There's a nice little bit of roll in the corners 
but as soon as you turn in, it's there giving you feedback. So then, Alpha Rally, except not. Because the more that I've driven this car, the more it's reminded me of another R. Something about being strapped in in these harnesses and then being able to brake so late, so deep, so precisely right up to an apex. And that sense of light weight, not huge amounts of power, the way it deals with bumps as well, that tarmac rally car theme, the carbon bonnet even. This really does remind me of a Megane R26R. I remember driving the R26R when it came out on some of these very roads and I've got exactly the same feelings. And as it turns out, that's not a coincidence. Yes, they both come from Dieppe, but they also have the fingerprints of one particular man on them. Because while a car is always the product of a team, it was Jean-Pascal Dos that was head of engineering for Renault Sport and who gathered together a small group of four to develop the R26R as a Skunk Works project. And guess what? Yep, the chief engineer at Alpine, whilst this was being developed, was the same man. It is no wonder that the greatest hot hatch of all time and this feels so brilliantly similar. And so, what does the Alpine's R stand for? Well, it's the same as on the R26R. R for radical. What's a pirate's favourite letter? Uh, you all went R, didn't you? No, tis the sea. 